Hi everybody. Today I want to do something a little bit different. Introduce you to two sort of special books, uh, books that I really enjoy. Actually, it's one book and one series of books, but uh, they're really kind of interesting books, and they teach a lot about several different lessons. I think the first book I want to introduce is called Flatland. Flatland was first published in 1884 by a guy named Edwin Abbott Abbott. Actually, when he first published the book, he authored it under the name A Square, which actually goes along with the kind of theme of the book. When the book was first written, uh, it was basically a mathemat mathematical, satirical piece describing the British aristocracy uh, of the time. Now, the reason this book is really interesting is because it's, it's got so many different levels uh, that can teach us something. So the original purpose, teaching us something about aristocracy, is really from the author's pers perspective, uh, given the context of the piece when it was actually written originally. On a second level, we actually see this piece as a sort of treatise on dimensionality and trying to understand uh, the difference between first, second, third dimensions and fourth dimensions or even higher level dimensions in a spatial reality. Now this is just one theory of spatial dimensionality uh, and it doesn't reflect Einstein's theories uh, and string theories when it considers time as part of the fourth dimension, space-time as fourth dimension in uh, dimensionality. This is a different theory of spatial dimensionality. But it's very interesting in that sense. And I think if you read it uh, from today's perspective, you really read it and learn a lot about uh, mathematics and dimensionality and what it might feel like or what it might be perceived to feel like uh, if a fourth dimen four dimensional creature was passing through our third dimensional space and how that might feel to us and what we might see. Uh, in terms of uh, how we might experience that, that kind of event. So it's really interesting from that perspective. It's a really short book, really valuable. Uh, one of the lessons that I think it really teaches us, though, is the importance of context when we're reading uh, any kind of philosophy or any kind of book like this. Uh, so someone the other day was asking me about uh, you know, Habermas and some other philosophical writers. And when we were talking about understanding these kinds of philosophy, it's really important to understand the, the author's perspective and when they were writing and who the person was that's actually writing the book. And without that context, it's very hard to understand the actual uh, meaning of the text on multiple levels. I mean, we can understand it from our current level and try to interpret it based on our context today, but it's also important to understand the context of the time in which it was written. It's just like how we understand art. The second series of books, which is uh, three books, is science fiction in the same kind of realm as uh, Flatland, and it's called The Three Bodies Problem. It's the first book of this series, and it's written by a Chinese author, and this book and this series is also really interesting on many, many levels. Uh, the first thing that's really interesting about this book is that it was one of the first books published uh, in China that had a sort of negative view of the Cultural Revolution. So uh, written by a Chinese author and allowed to be published in China, uh, written about the Cultural Revolution and puts it in a sort of negative light. So that's kind of interesting sort of historical context or a modern context of this book. In addition, it brings in this same kind of thinking about uh, dimensionality and uh, space travel and uh, alien life and all of these kinds of things that really uh, inspire us in many ways. Now, what I love about this book and about the series in general is that it creates a lot of phil philosophical questions about uh, human species, uh, how we view ourselves, uh, in sort of this universe of time and space, in the sort of grand, large question of millions and millions of years uh, in time and space, but also how we see ourselves today uh, in relation to uh, alien species and whether we think that uh, maybe we are actually hurting this planet and some other alien species is going to come. One of the best things about this book is it really reminds me of sort of these Isaac Asimov kind of stories that expand millions and millions of years and the time uh, sort of the length of the, how fast the novel moves changes uh, depending on where you are in the s series. And so it's really interesting to see uh, in the beginning you're seeing a lifetime sort of progress and then as we move forward we're moving faster and faster through time, but we're still watching people and how they live through these time periods. So I know that everyone's on lockdown, but I really hope that you have a chance to read these books. Uh, I find them really brilliant and fascinating. Uh, I'm a very big fan of science fiction, especially th science fiction that makes us think, makes us sort of think about those questions that we have trouble answering with our modern day technology and our modern physics, uh, and sort of expand our philosophical understanding of the origins of the, our universe and what's beyond, uh, what, what's out there that we can't actually see.